Battery degradation is something many electric vehicle owners and prospective owners worry about. But there are things you can do to minimize this issue. Up next, five simple tips to increase the lifespan of your EV's battery, plus a bonus tip that may be the biggest game changer of all. Starting things off, tip number one is the simplest. Avoid charging your vehicle to 100%. Yep, that's it. Practically every EV out there lets you set a charging limit, typically through the infotainment system, and you can dial this into 80% or whatever, and you're good to go. Of course, there are times when you will want a full charge if you're going on a long trip or the weather is freezing, and that's okay. The battery is perfectly fine being charged all the way up to 100%. It's just to maximize the life Try to avoid this regularly if you can. In fact, this is something plainly spelled out on the website for the Ford F-150 Lightning. Ford recommends that you charge to 90% for everyday driving and charge to 100% when you need the full range for a trip. Charging to 90% helps prolong the life of your battery. Now, there's one specific case where this advice doesn't apply, but I'll get to that with our bonus suggestion in just a little bit. Closely related to point number one, our next tip is try to keep your vehicle's state of charge between roughly 20% and about 80%. Batteries, like people, just want to take it easy. As I mentioned, it's best to avoid fully charging an EV's battery, but it's also not a good idea to completely discharge one either. Staying away from the extremes is something recommended by many electric vehicle manufacturers. And for instance, the owner's manual for the all-electric BMW i4 says, to optimize the service life of the high voltage battery, keep the charge level between 10% to 80% if possible. Next, avoid DC fast charging if you can. Again, this is something that's totally fine to do and basically mandatory if you're on a long road trip. But level one or level two AC charging you'd most often do at home puts much less strain on a vehicle's battery pack. As highlighted in the EQE electric sedans manual, Mercedes-Benz recommends that owners only charge the high voltage battery with direct current if necessary. Basically they and other automakers don't want people using DC fast chargers as their only charger because that puts a lot of strain on a vehicle's battery pack stress that will reduce the life expectancy over time. Similarly, our fourth tip is be mindful of extreme temperatures. If it's below zero and you need to DC fast charge your Model Y, maybe take it out for a drive on the highway first to warm the battery pack up a little bit before you attempt to throw a whole bunch of electricity at it. Of course, some EVs allow you to manually start preconditioning the battery, basically warming it up so charging is optimized, or oftentimes preconditioning will start automatically if you select a charger as a destination in the navigation system. Now, on the opposite side of the coin, if it's 110 degrees out and you've been cruising on the highway for the last few hours, it can't hurt to let your vehicle cool off a little bit before charging if you want to maximize battery life. And finally, tip number five is avoid driving aggressively like all the time. Frequent large discharges from an EV's battery can degrade the pack more than just taking it easy. I mean, the same is true of combustion powered vehicles. Flooring the accelerator from every stoplight will cause more powertrain wear and tear than if you drive like a nun. But do nuns actually drive? I don't know. And if they do, they'd better not be praying the rosary behind the wheel because that's a distraction. All of these tips are pretty conventional advice and they'll serve you well with both new and used EVs, but like all things, technologies change. And that brings me to our bonus tip. And it's this, shop for an EV with an LFP battery. Without getting into the weeds about battery chemistry, LFPs use lithium iron phosphate, a more stable and sustainable cocktail of materials. And crucially, LFP batteries have an impressively longer life cycle than conventional packs. They generally perform better in a wider temperature range, are better for the environment, and most important for this discussion, you don't have to fret about charging them to 100%. So max them out every night, it's not going to hurt. 
There are downsides, of course. Typically, LFPs charge more slowly in the cold, and they are less energy dense. That means they don't go as far as a similarly sized battery using a more conventional chemistry. Some shorter range models from both Tesla and Ford are being equipped with LFPs, and it's safe to say there's a lot more on the way. Before wrapping up, a little something to think about. Now, battery degradation is a thing, and changing the pack on your car is far more difficult and expensive than just swapping your phone's battery. So working to prevent degradation is smart, but is it necessary? Well, in some cases, it may not actually matter. A number I've seen widely reported is that, on average, EVs lose about 2.3% of their battery capacity per year. Now, conservatively, if we double that and say the annual reduction is 5%, a vehicle with an estimated 300 miles of range should still deliver 180 miles on a charge after 10 years of use. Now, if the degradation rate is, in fact, just 2.3% over that decade, you'd only lose about 56 miles of range. How much horsepower and fuel economy do combustion-powered vehicles lose over 10 years and, say, 150,000 miles? Probably quite a bit. But again, for the most conscientious of you out there, avoid charging to 100%. Similarly, try to keep the battery state of charge between 20 and 80%. DC fast charge responsibly. Be mindful of extreme temperatures. And five, avoid aggressive driving, like, all the time. Next up, watch our explainer video about electric vehicles and the power grid. Will the widespread adoption of EVs send us back to the dark ages? Well, a couple experts weigh in.